great it would be to get to 100 and still be running around on your own two legs or on your own two wheels. Just think how great it would be to get to 100 and still feel like living another 100. Thank you, Tom. Well, we're going to have another of our case studies now. So we have Attila Kanson from Merck Consumer Health here, and he's going to talk to us about a rather innovative pro program that Merck is piloting, I think, at the moment. Exactly. Uh, what's it called? It's uh, We 100 is the name of the movement. So it's dedicated, thank you. It's dedicated to the dream of the, of the company to help um, contribute to the society where humans are living 100 years. And specifically what we talk about, what we bid for, the dream of is, um, the terminology was used, coherent society, is the dream of a society where the young and the old depend on each other, maybe they don't live with each other, but they interact, learn from each other and build on their fortes. So specifically what we're going to do as of January in the UK is to start out a volunteering program with our employees at Merck Consumer Health that play the young part and match them up with the elderly to start something new mm -hmm. and experience something new. So the motto of the program is going to be, um, there's always time for a first time. And uh, we encourage the elderly who may not have experienced over a longer period of time, I'll show some data from a recent study, to encourage them to experience some, something new, to trigger uh, a positive energy, to make them part of life, to give them this thrill that they may be missing, and to show them also that making the first step is going to be the spark into creating this movement. Um, what I thought would be a great start also into the discussion is to share maybe if uh, Holly we can have a look at the, the chart, just, some of the excellent. Yeah. So um, some of the recent learning. So over the, over the past year or so, we have been studying in different countries from Malaysia to Chile, from the UK to Kenya, this um, area of what are expectations of people, of a society, of themselves, where the reality is they may be looking forward to a life of 100, if not more years, right? And the most recent one was about the elderly and their attitude of the elderly in Germany and in the UK specifically. We asked um, about 1,000 people, 60 to 89, uh, to find out a little bit more about the qualitatives of what may hold them back, what is their attitude towards working. So similar to uh, what you may have heard is two-thirds, about I think 64% of the elderly, they're actually willing and uh, wanting to go back to work after the retirement. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the dynamics that are going on in the vast majority of European businesses, that people start as of 60, counting their days, years and weeks and days towards retirement, and if it's kind of a normality for people to, even if it's the most capable employee, to kiss them goodbye and push them out to, into their next stage that everybody's comfortable with, However, two-thirds of them have in the back of their mind, if there was a possibility, they would like to go back to the workforce. The other thing that was very interesting is about 83% actually are willing and wanting to learn things from the younger generation. Don't you wonder about the 17%? This, I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, obviously you can. Like, I can learn from There's, older people. I exactly. always wonder about these people who don't give the, you know, the, exactly. the answer. There's always the other part, right? So we focus on the 83% yeah, are willing so. to... Yeah. open up and learn, maybe not as young as the child here, but why not, right? It's yes. about the attitude. So this also eliminates these prejudices of, um, I think, Baroness Altman was re referring to, um, people are a little bit stamped as they're rigid, they're not willing to learn, yes. they may be omitting some of the trainings, also because I'm about to go to, to my retirement, right, what to expect. So does HR and the corporation says, you know, they have a couple of years to go. Why should we invest into this employee? Though vast majority are actually willing to learn. Then we also tapped into this territory of uh, doing something, giving yourself a stimulus, an impulse, doing something new. About, this is very sad actually, I'm kind of embarrassed to share this, but more than half of people in the UK are complaining that they have not experienced anything new over a year or so which is ridiculous, it is right? It's, yeah. It is the routine that we're going through and people, and that becomes normality for the elderly that they have this life, they are you know, pre-tailored for them, they're in pension and hence there are not really the expectations to step out of that routine and experience something new. And this is going to be the core of the idea which I'm hoping will get big resonance in the UK of there's always time for a first time. Mm. 
Mm, okay. And why not doing a crash course, digital crash course? Why not learning how to date online, right? A lot of them may have lost their partner or have separated. They don't give themselves the benefit of the doubt and see what may come out. Um, the other piece that's very interesting I wanted to share, again, from a qualitative perspective, what are in between the lines here happening is that about two-thirds, again, of the elderly, they feel like they're being held back um, from participating, actively participating in life. And uh, a couple of the aspects of this is the younger generation and their attitude towards them. We just talked about it actually outside that they're not doing themselves a favor by not discriminating in so many different ways. But when it comes to the elderly, it is okay to pull jokes and it is kind of fine to put them to the side and celebrate the youth of the rest of us, right? And so they feel it. Mm -hmm. And two thirds of them, they feed back that they don't feel comfortable in their corporate environment, in the fact that the HR is kind of skipping their name if it comes down to the training, who are the few people who are going to be sent over to be trained in this new great technology and whatnot. And so this is the piece that is not about capability. It's the piece about emotions. Mm -hmm. It's the piece um, that requires the society and then in the context of the economies, the corporations, the politics to help people break these barriers. So those are kind of the four or five of the data that we have just found out about. And um, even more so as a company, Mark Consumer Health, and all of our employees, I can talk for 4,500 people, we are wholeheartedly behind this movement of We 100, believing that everybody has the right and should get the support to live 100 great years. And if you ask me how to do that, is the core of it is going to be these, the, the coherent society, the mm -hmm. generations where the young stands in for the old, the old shares their experience and expertise with the young and um, build on their strengths, build on each other. So when I, when I listen to you, I mean, it, it sounds great and it's a, it's a, it's a very worthwhile initiative, but I, I hear you saying, you know, we, we the young will help the old. Like the old are out there and the young are inside Merck or inside any company or whatever. <laughs> but of course, you've got some old people working for you too. Yes. At least, you know, middle-aged or late middle-aged or whatever. Yes. And um, I mean, it's young people outside the company and older people within it as well. I mean, I presume I'm just being simplistic, but <laughs> it's, it reminds me a little bit of the awful programs that we as children were allowed to do when we were teenagers. And we, I, don't know, I don't know if you have the same awful expression for it, when you were sent off to visit people and it was called granny bashing. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Everyone here remembers granny bashing, you know, where you were, you know, you would go and visit Sounds an old person. And it, I mean, it's so, I mean, you didn't do anything terrible to them, not really, but it was so um, patronising in a way. Yeah. And so how do, you, how do you get past that notion that, you know, oh, we're being so good to people, oh, we're trying to help them? I mean, yeah. you, you said it, you said about how we can learn from them too, they can Absolutely. learn from us, it's both ways, but how yeah. as a company are you going to approach so, that? So, great question. So we're looking at the whole spectrum of 100 years. So the program has, We 100 has two aspects to it. One is the younger. So we look at the kids in primary schools. We call it the healthy hour. We're about to also introduce this in Africa and South Africa, starting out with a couple of schools, teaching kids, the old coming in. Right, right, right. So they're giving so their pharmacists, side of... doc doctors, they're becoming teachers in the program, teaching the, educating the young that life is not about the sprint that they're thinking they're being told for the next 30, 40 years, you know, finishing high school, going to university, nailing the fattest job, and you know, it's a sprint as it is, right? But that it is a marathon. Mm. And if you want it to actually function properly when you hit 100, we say, you know, the, the, uh, iconically, you want to blow the, the candles of your own 100th birthday cake, and you want to be dancing to your favorite music on your own legs and bite into your cake with your own teeth, right? How do you? <laughs> and you can't intervene on that when you're actually realizing, oh, God, my back is hurting, and, yeah, you know, my yeah. knees, and they the won't. Anymore, right? so yeah. I don't have the teeth anymore. Yeah. It's just way too late. So we're looking at the two ends of the spectrum. The younger that uh, ought to be thought that the real life ahead of them is not the one that goes up until you get the job and then you know you push your career with trainings. It's about 100, 110. I mean, at the moment in Germany, the newborns, they're projected by life insurances. This is not my own you know, positive thinking. 108, 109 years, right? right? So they ought to, they better learn next to math and physics and geography and everything, how to take care of themselves. This entails nerve care, very important, joints, muscle, nutrition, nutrition yeah. right? So that's the one piece of it where the 
the, the old come in for the, right. the help so of they, the young. they could do some kitty bashing or whatever. I don't know. There whatever you call it. There isn't a word for that. No. No. <laughs> and um, so at the other end would be then the, the piece that you refer to where, I'm not saying it's the young, but it's employees of a company, right? Yeah. We talked about the policy and policy. The reality of it is unless you create cases with corporations, real-time business cases where it starts to work, you can't actually start a movement, a positive spiral. Mm. So we start out with 100 people. Um, in our UK organization to go out and match with the elderly. With that, I mean the, you know, the, the, the 60 to 89, that is the, the, the target group, to give them the chance to pick at their own will an experience that is going to give them the thrill, that's going to allow them to step out of their routine. And let's see what happens. So it's meant to be for the entire year. So we have a plan also to uh, seed in people, uh, out of the goodness of their heart, we don't have the huge budgets to move now all of the UK, right? But to create these examples concretely that you can maybe watch on the TV, hear on the radio, and you know, read in the magazine and get inspired and be part of it. And I mean, something that I've heard from people is that, you know, the people, some people are very happy when they're retired, but some people retire and then they feel useless. This is the word mm. they use. You know, they yeah. say, I want to be useful. Yeah. It's not that I want someone to visit me or it's not that I want, you know, someone to... Uh, provide me with something I don't have. It's that I want to still have a purpose. Yes, absolutely. So is that something that you've heard back and is that something the program is looking at, giving people a purpose? Absolutely. So um, the, the, the reality is over the past 50 years or so, the part of your life where you're retired has increased immensely, yes. right? So if we're looking now, assuming 100 years old, and in some parts of the world, it is a reality already, right? In, in, well, for some, in some people, some people yeah. it is a reality. So you're looking at 35, 37 years of doing what, yeah. right? Yeah. And so this reason for being um, something useful, as you said, to give back to the society. I have so much, you know, I may have gone through a fantastic career and then they kiss me goodbye into my retirement. I have so much still to stimulate, to give back. And it may be that some of the wisdom is coming actually with the latest and greatest stuff, like yeah. listen to your mom. <laughs> I mean, I sort of wonder whether some of these people that, that Merck employees are visiting, actually what it'll turn into is the older person doing a bit of careers counseling. And, and you know, absolutely. like you say, well, maybe they need to learn online dating. Well, I mean, maybe your Merck employees need a bit, need a bit of marriage guidance. Yeah, exactly. It may work that way around exactly. too. So we're planning, to see. We're, we're planning to, of course, we're not forcing people, but we're looking also for volunteer sharing. So we're, we're looking at a platform that we can actually broadly share yeah. these experiences for those obviously who I, want to share I, I, I their you're going moment. to be you're going to be um, monitoring it over the year but you know I wonder and I, I, I email me when you get the results yeah, back I in a year's time I'd be interested to hear absolutely. if actually a lot more of it goes the other Cross way around than you thought was absolutely yeah. yes 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 does so. anyone in the audience have a question I, I, yes there's a hand here I don't think it is. No, it's not on. We don't. You shout, yes. <laughs> There's a, yeah, they're going to just turn it on for you, I think. Thanks. Oh, yeah. uh, my name is Jan, I'm from Three Hands. So it strikes me that certainly the um, uh, potential for an intergenerational learning element is there, but I also wonder if uh, you've thought about this in terms of uh, not just the social impact of this brilliant program, but also the fact that the older people are quite potentially your customers yes. as well. And it strikes me that uh, we have the chief marketing officer uh, talking and not the chief uh, corporate responsibility person uh, talking. So <laughs> yeah. what's, the, uh, what's the market opportunity here? There, you should become a journalist. That's the question I should have asked. No, great <laughs> question. So um, we have separated the, the We100 project out from everything else that we're doing. Of course, we do have... Um, we, we are active in different parts of healthcare, but we're thinking about this solely as a standalone project, a concept to cross-fertilize across generations and see what happens out of it. So the, the, the way kind of it, it touches what we're doing as a business also is, of course, we're interacting with a lot of pharmacists, right? They're full of wisdom. They have a lot of passion for teaching kids. We talk to a lot of doctors who also want the, 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 the chance to step out of their routine. So um, I was, um, earlier this year, I was in Mexico. There was a, uh, a room full of Costa Ricans. They were saying, you know, we want to sign up our whole clinic to go out to uh, schools and, and, and share these very practical things that can be life-saving in the worst case and the best case prolonging their lives. So that is kind of the link um, in my job. I'm listening to 
um, consumers, patients, but also a lot to pharmacists and, and doctors. So we're trying to bring them together in a uh, meaningful way. Thank you. Any more questions? Right now. Are you going to be one of the volunteers? Yes, I'm definitely yeah. looking into. Yes, yeah. we have uh, thought about up to three weeks of volunteering, which means that the company is uh, enabling, allowing the employees to step out and sign up for this project. And they'll have to, just like any other project that they'd be working on, they would have to then report back. Yes. And uh, we have also the kind of set up to um, share those magical moments when it happens, right? So that it's not a write-up or an email, but it is the in this moment as it is happening, maybe blogging, sharing the, 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 that moment and what they have realized, which I'm hoping is going to move millions of people. And me, myself, I'm wholeheartedly dedicated to this project. The origin of it is actually was from... Just, that was my next question. You've ruined it. I was going to say, where okay. did the idea for this it's project come from? from? <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the idea is kind of um, in the DNAs of the company. So it started out as a, a pharmacist company 350 years ago. So they were mixing potions for the neighborhood, listening to them and everything. So there's a, a, there's a historical part to it. But me personally, how the, start, uh, the, the spark came to me is my own dad, he was so interested in, in uh, early retirement. And uh, after he, he tired himself, he himself to, yes. exactly. He had you know, two careers at the same time, very pulled into all sorts of direction. And then five years into his retirement, he has realized that you know, he has asked himself the question, you know, how can I still contribute? How can I, am I useful any longer? And uh, you could tell that in his you know, tone of voice, in his attitude, in the interactions that he let loose of the best part, juicy part of life. So, we have talked about it, and he himself then applied for jobs. He used to be an architecture professor, this happening in Istanbul, and he's now leading the architecture faculty for one of the um, universities in Istanbul. He's 72 years old, and he loves it. He had to, it meant for him after 10 years in architecture, of course, the software has evolved, you know, the, the ways you teach stuff and the, the content is no more what it was when he was good at his job, right? But it needed the 83% mm. the of him to get reactivated, mm show the openness and the willingness to learn from the young, from his assistants, from the PhD students, to get into the software and be able to function with the um, millennial generation. And that was a very inspiring personal story for me that I brought in as we were having these conversations in our executive committee and wholeheartedly encouraged also other top managers to share their experience and everybody because the topic uh, is not about you know, selling products, it's about life, it's about um, it's a heart matter. It's mm. yourself. You ask yourself. You can at, the, at your kids. You know how can I enable them to live fantastic 100 years? Think about your parents. How much do they have to go? Could I increase their life quality so everybody is uh, naturally attracted and dedicated to this? project to this cause. It's funny the stories that we tell publicly and the stories that we don't. I mean, one of the things I notice is that uh, there's, there's sort of a real genre of women and women journalists in particular talking about having kids. Like if you want to read articles about, you know, whether a person had a cesarean or whether they, you know, tried for natural childbirth or something, you know, you will find thousands. <laughs> and you'll often find them complaining about other women's choices, actually, <laughs> which is a shame. But then when it comes to be that your own parents start to experience ill health or that you're struggling trying to look after your own children at the same time as your parents yeah. need you. That's like it's a private drama. Mm. You know, and it's, of course it happens to all of us unless we die sadly young. So it's funny that that isn't out there as just something that's part of life and uh, you know, that there are models and stories and so on. So I'll be very interested to hear what sort of stories come back to you after the year. Because yeah. I don't think it'll only be about the people you're working with. I think it'll be about their families, their yes. work, yeah. their past, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like so to date, absolutely, that's what I'm looking forward to. There's going to be a lot of meat to the bones also when yeah. this becomes real. But already you might try and write a book or something. You might try and pick 10 of the stories or something and do we'll, a, you know, 10 or 15 we'll, chapters. We'll absolutely look into the most um, impactful way of sharing yeah. this with everybody. What we have already done internally, as we were having discussions in different platforms, in Merck itself, in consumer health, we, we um, looked into also sharing these kind of personal perspectives so our intranet site for which we just plugged also with you, right. thank you very much for coming into my world. Um, people have shared from their perspective, what does we 100 mean? And these are, you know, from everywhere, from Mexico, Hungary, from um, 
Africa, a lot of them sharing either as a professional, their difficulties as it links to the different generations, the mm. younger, as mm. you said, becoming a mother for the, for the female employees and how do I deal with my parents as they grow older, they're going through their own situation, mm. right? Menopause mm. being one that was mentioned earlier, this was also part of it. So I'm looking forward to um, Ten thousands of stories like this, touching stories like this, I think you might and want to role choose. models. Yeah, you might want to choose. I mean, the role model element is very important. You might want to yeah. choose sort of a few, not necessarily the most striking or odd ones, but kind of totemic ones. Yeah. Ones that you know, again and again, the same issues come up. These questions yeah. of you know, how do you navigate you know falling in love for a second time when you're older yeah. or whatever. You know, those sorts of things. Yeah, absolutely. Some years ago, um, I wrote a piece for our Christmas issue in the Economist, which was about statisticians during the Second World War, oh, yeah. and I used to work for the Royal Statistical Society and I, I mean you know unless you read this article you won't necessarily know this but I mean statistics modern statistics is very much based on developments during the Second World War sure. there were a bunch of young men who were and they were all men who were stopped going off to university and they were sent to the war effort as statisticians and they became all the famous statisticians and of course they were all in their late 80s and early 90s and I was writing it and so oh, it was really interesting to talk to them about you know, how they had made a difference to the course of the World War, and then they had gone off all around the world yeah. and created this entire new discipline. Mm -hmm. And it just strikes me, you're going to have people telling you, you know, similar stories of things you had no idea I about. Well, I think so, You should too. capture them, yeah. you should definitely we will, capture them. Definitely, mm. and pick together with you if you're interested, I'll well, share Well, do share with me in a year what you hear about it. I think Excellent. we're out of time, thank you so much. Thank you for it's a really interesting me. project. Thank you. Thank you.